The Jell-O program brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Relax. You know, friends, it's not really considered quite fair to open packages before Christmas, but of course there's one package that you can open any day with the whole family's hearty approval. And that's a package of Jell-O. Open a package and serve it tomorrow. And let the folks at your house enjoy Jell-O's wonderful new locked-in flavor. Jell-O's gay scintillating colors add charm to any table. Lend a festive touch to any meal. Why, just to look at a bright, shimmering mold of Jell-O is enough to set appetites a tingle. And when it comes to flavor, well, Jell-O is simply in a class by itself. There's just nothing that can beat Jell-O's rich, tangy taste. So full of intriguing flavor, so downright good and refreshing. Tomorrow, treat everybody to a tempting dish of Jell-O. Ask your grocer for all of Jell-O's six delicious flavors. They're all locked in, and they're all better than ever. was Relax, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, the Yuletide season is here with all its joy and gaiety. So without further ado, we bring you a star to place atop your Christmas tree, ah. Jack Benny. <laughs> wow. Well, hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, that was quite a whimsical introduction, a star to place atop your Christmas tree. I suppose you said that because I'm a movie star. Is that right? No, Jack, that wasn't my thought at all. Oh. I meant that you actually and physically resemble a star. Well, I don't, uh... I, uh, I don't get it, Don. What do you mean? Well, for instance, you've got a dash of silver in your hair. Yes. And you've always got a merry twinkle in your eye. Yes, yes. And the seat of your pants is always bright and shiny. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And you're wearing the only pair of pointed shoes in Hollywood. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Don. I'm not going to argue about the silver and the twinkle, and I'll even go along with the shiny pants. But these pointed shoes I've got on are very popular. They're French Shriner and Erner's new bayonet model. <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh, they're very snappy, don't you think? Snappy is right. But personally, Jack, I like a shoe that spreads out. Listen, brother, any shoe you step into is doomed. <laughs> Believe me. Oh, I'm not so heavy on my feet. You're not, eh, Don? Your arches fell the first time your mother said, Come on, Snookums, walk toward me. <laughs> but speaking about these shoes I'm wearing... Wow, get a load of them. Did Vaudeville come back? No, Vaudeville didn't come back. <laughs> Just so happens that for a change, I switched to a pointed, tight-fitting shoe. Then where do you keep your money now? <laughs> I've got a hollow tooth. I can go along with a gag, sister. <laughs> now, let me tell you something, young lady. Any more of those Livingston Lulus tonight, and your invitation to my Christmas party next Thursday is automatically canceled. Remember that. Oh, Jack, speaking of your party, what are you going to serve for dinner? Turkey, goose, or duck? Ham hocks and not another word about it. <laughs> Come early, Don. You know, a lot of big, uh, a lot of big movie stars are going to be there. Movie stars? Name one. Now, there'll be lots of them. Come on, name one. Oh, they'll be there. Don't stall. Name one movie star that's going to be at your party. All right, Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> I know he's coming because he already sent me a wire by Western Union. Western Union I heard about, but who is Rodney Dangerfield? <laughs> who is Rodney Dangerfield? Well, I'll be... Mary, did you see the Fargo kid rides the Pony Express on the Santa Fe Trail at the Hitching Post Theater last week? <laughs> did you? No. Well, that was Rodney's greatest performance. If you could have seen him jump out of the second-story window of a burning building and gallop out of town on his horse blazing away with his six-shooter in one hand and playing tumbleweed girl I love you on his guitar with the other. 
Well, what a scene. Pretty thrilling, huh? Was it? A kid sitting in back of me got so excited he beat me on the head with a stick of licorice. <laughs> anyway, you'll meet Rodney at my house next Thursday. Well, who else is coming, Jack? Well, you know, I'm making a picture with Carol Lombard, so naturally I had to invite her. And I also told her to ask Clark if he wanted to come. He whiz, is Clark Gable going to be at your party? Well, I'm not sure about him, but I got a definite no from Lombard. <laughs> Let's see, and the uh, Gary Coopers can't come, and the Henry Fondas had a previous engagement, and Bob Taylor and Barbara Stanwyck have a toothache. <laughs> Between them? How do I know? And then Claudette Colbert can't come. She sprained her ankle. I saw her dancing at the Macombo last night. With that ankle? Poor kid. <laughs> and then uh, Errol Flynn can't make it. He's in New York, you know. Well, let's see. Oh, yes, Barney Dean. He's coming. I'm, I'm sure of that. Well, here I go again. Who's Barney Dean? <laughs> Who's Barney Dean? Did you see Sergeant York? Yes. Well, he was a soldier in that. <laughs> That's who. Anyway, Barney Dean will be there. And then I invited... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, bub. Sorry I'm late, but I was across the street shooting pool. Shooting pool? Well, let me ask you something, Phil. Who pays you your salary, me or the pool room? Look, Jackson, if I didn't take the salary I get here and double it over there, I'd have to give up me. <laughs> Too bad about you. Hey, Phil, are you and Alice coming to Jack's party? Oh, I don't know. Who's going to be there? Everybody from Barney Dean to Rodney Dangerfield. Don't run him down. Hey, is Rod Dangerfield going to be at your party? Yep. Oh, that guy's terrific. I think he's darn near as good as Hoot Horowitz. <laughs> what do you mean, darn near as good? Did you see Rodney's latest picture, the Fargo kid rides the Pony Express on the Santa Fe Trail? Yeah, I seen it last week. That was a thriller, wasn't it? You said it. I got so excited I hit some old bird in the front of me with my electric stick. <laughs> Oh, ho! So that was you. You were at the Hitching Post Theater last Tuesday evening. Not so loud, Jackson. I was playing hooky from uh, my night school. Oh. Well, don't worry. I won't squeal. You better not sponge or I'll have to drill you. A bang, a bang, a bang. <laughs> You're not a drilling me, son. Go round the sheriff. A bang, a bang, a bang. Uh-oh, bang! <laughs> These two cowboys come to you through the courtesy of Jello, who are open for suggestions. Never mind. We'll talk about the picture later, Phil. Now, how about a band number? Okay. Hold it. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Am I going to be invited to your Christmas party? My name is Pigeon. Walter Pigeon? No, Dead Pigeon. A bang, a bang, a bang. <laughs> what a head he's got. That's the only grapefruit I ever saw that can take shorthand. <laughs> he's my secretary, folks. Play, Phil.
that was Popo Catapetal, played by Phil Harris and his Yule Tide Orchestra. Yule meaning you'll have to go a long way to hear a band like this, and Tide meaning I wish they'd go out with us. <laughs> Uh, but no, uh, but no kidding, Phil. That number sounded swell. It was really the nut. All right, Don. Phil's number was the nut. Oh, Jack, this one is utterly <laughs> absurd. Don, Phil's band number was the nut. You know it wasn't. That's not the point. <laughs> Come on, Don. Phil's band number was the nut. Oh, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, the next time you go to your neighborhood grocery... <laughs> you see? Why not ask him for a package of Jell-O with its new locked-in flavor? Now, here's the clever part, folks. Oh, Jack, I'll never be able to face my friend. Don Nuts! <laughs> oh, very well. So whether your name is Hazel or Filbert, you will not regret buying this tempting and economical dessert by Hickory. Very good. Very good. There you are, Don. That was one of the most novel things I've ever written. Oh, Jack, you didn't write that. Yes, I did. All by yourself? All by myself. You mean it came to you like a flash? Like a bolt out of the blue. Keep talking, brother. When I get the right lead, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> no, don't be so critical. That was a very clever commercial. Wasn't it, Dennis? Hey, where's Dennis? Here I am. I'm back in Mr. Wilson. Oh. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. You got to humor the kid. <laughs> Say, Dennis, have you got a nice song prepared for today? Yeah, but first I want to thank you for letting me come over to the studio the other day. Oh, don't mention it. That was a pretty hot love scene you did with Carol Lombard, by golly. Yes, it was. Gosh, when you grabbed her and gave her that big kiss, I got so excited I was quivering all over. You were? She didn't even move a muscle. Never mind. What's the matter with that girl? I don't know. Look, boy, she kisses Gable when she leaves home in the morning, and she kisses him when she gets back at night. Anything in between is strictly cheesecake. <laughs> well, I don't want to be catty, but... Oh, well, forget it. How about a song, Dennis? What's it going to be? I'm going to sing a medley of Christmas Carol. Good. Oh, say, fellas, that reminds me. I've got to go home early tonight and do some work on my Christmas tree. I want to get it all trimmed up for the party. You want to come and help me, Mary? Sure, why not? Phil, after Dennis's song, you can play a few selections and fill out the program. Well, that'll give me a chance to play a couple of high-class numbers like who's this plays. Uh, you know, Andre Costa... What's the rest of this here? Lannis. Andre Costa Lannis. Oh, brother. Well, why do you always embarrass me by making up them big words? <laughs> I didn't make up anything. That's the man's name. He's married to Lily Pond. Her, I can say. <laughs> Look, Phil, just accompany Dennis a song, then put on your hat and go home. Come on, Mary, let's get out of here. What's that? Come in. Telegram. I mean, special delivery for Mary Livingston. <laughs> right here, bud. Give him a tip, will you, Jack? Okay. Here you are, boy. Here's a half a dollar for you. Thanks. I can go along with a gag. A boom. <laughs> you can louse it up, too. <laughs> you know. He had to put a boom on the end of it. Wasn't satisfied the way it was written. Had to put a boom. Anyway, I'd like to see one stooge in this town with hair. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. This letter's from Mama. You can read it in the cab. Come on. Oh, let her read it now, Jack. Mary's mother's a... She's just a, a riot. Oh, all right. I'm glad you got that out, too. <laughs> we had an hour program. We'd be very successful here. You know that. Don't you? All right, read your mother's letter, Mary. What's the head of Hopper of Plainfield got to say? <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary, just in line to let you know that Christmas is almost here, and as yet I have not received your X-Chase. 
Act case. But don't get me wrong. If your check has been delayed in the mail, I take back everything I'm thinking. How can anybody be so mercenary? Your sister Ethel and her husband are here for the holidays and will spend several weeks with us. Inasmuch as they live right next door, I think this is an imposition. Oh, I don't know. Quiet. You ought to see your sister's new baby. Everybody says it's a regular little doll. And they're right. It looks just like Popeye. Well, no wonder, after all, your sister is no rose. And that husband of hers, does he still sell bluing house to house? No, he's a vanilla extract man now. Oh, vanilla extract man. Oh, he's going places. Come on, finish the letter. Speaking of Christmas, I saw your father tiptoeing up the stairs last night with a great big package over his shoulder. I was thrilled to death until I found out the package was your Uncle Willie. <laughs> Boy, was he full of vanilla. No more news, except that your brother Bacardi... Bacardi? Papa named him off a bottle. Oh, oh. Except that your brother Bacardi was turned down by the army on account of flat feet, chest, and head. <laughs> also, his hands drag on the ground when he walks. Gee, his nails must be a mess. <laughs> Love to all, Mama. Well, I'm glad that's over. Oh, wait a minute. Here's the P.S. Tell Jack I heard him do Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde on the program a few weeks ago. What a pew foreman. <laughs> pew foreman? Let's see that. Well, I'll be darned. Hmm, if I'd have known this was going to happen, I'd have put another cup of water in that perfume I sent her. Sing, Dennis. See you Christmas, fellas. Come on, Mary. Let's get over to the house. Right up here, buddy. It's that big white house with the iron reindeer on the lawn. Okay, pal. Boy, look at that meter. A dollar and a half. Hmm. 
Oh, driver, how much do I owe you? Like she said, a dollar and a half. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, how would you like to match? Three dollars or nothing? Double or nothing? Okay, pal. I'm matching you. Just a second. Okay, here goes. Come on, lift up. Hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> so long, pal. <laughs> Rochester, why doesn't he answer the door? <laughs> I have to stand here all night? Oh, take it easy, Jack. Calm down. What three dollars? It's not the money. I don't believe in gambling. <laughs> don't talk to me. I feel awful. Why don't you take off one of those shoes and cut your throat? <laughs> Mary, I'm in no mood for any... Good evening, boss. Happy Yuletide. Rochester, you were late answering the door, and I'm going to teach you a lesson. I'm fining you three dollars. <laughs> you understand? I wish the stock market would come back that fast. Never mind. Any messages, Rochester? Yes, sir. Mr. Charles Boyer called and said he won't be able to attend your Christmas party. Why not? You got me, boss. He gave his excuse in French. <laughs> Well, that's the sneakiest thing I ever heard of. Any other messages? Yes, Lady Mendel phone. Said she got your lovely invitation, and who are you? <laughs> hmm. Did she ever go to the movies, for heaven's sake? Come on, Mary, the tree is in the library. Bring my slippers, Rochester. Your slippers? Yes. Lounging, bedroom, or ballet? <laughs> I'm in no mood for a ballet dance, believe me. Bring in my lounging slippers. Yes, sir. Come on, Mary. While I'm putting the star on top of the tree, you can be hanging popcorn balls on the branches. Oh, is your tree going to have branches this year? <laughs> yes, it's going to have branches. <laughs> well, I think the one you had like... Uh-oh, here comes your border. Yeah. I wonder why he's carrying that hatchet. Hello, Mr. Billingsley. Good afternoon, Mr. Benny. Home a little early, I see. <laughs> yes, yes, I have some work to do around the house. Oh, Mr. Billingsley, what are you doing with that hatchet? Are you a Boy Scout now? No, I'm going out to dinner later, and when I say chopped chicken liver, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh... Oh, I, uh... I see. Well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Keep him flying. <laughs> Hmm. I can't... I can't understand Mr. Billingsley lately. You know, Mary, he slept under his bed last night. He hung onto the springs like a bat. You know? Weird fellow. Well, there you are. There's my Christmas tree, Mary. Isn't it nice? Yeah, that's the biggest one you ever had. Where'd you get it? Got it just north of Redwood City. Well, let's start with the decorations. Mary, you hang up these candy canes and I'll... Rochester, what happened to that box of popcorn balls we had in the closet? I got bad news, boss. There's nothing in there now but a big, fat mouse. Darn it, I'm short of ornament. Got to have something to hang on that tree. Yes, those socks look awful by themselves. The socks are coming off as soon as they're dry. <laughs> I wanted popcorn balls to add a little... Say, I have an idea. How would oranges look there? Oranges? Yeah, I've got a backyard full of them. I'll go out and pick them. Meanwhile, start with those candy canes, Mary. I'll be right back. Jingle bells, jingle bells, yum, bum, 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 Three dollars. I had to match them. Yum, bum, 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 bum. Oh, well. Uh, jingle bells, jingle bells, yum, bum, tea. Let's see. I think there's some big ones in this tree over here. Yeah, these will be fine and nice, big, juicy ones. I'll take about a dozen. Let's see. One, two, three, 
four, five. Hello, mister. What are you doing? Hello, six. Oh, oh, hello, little girl. Where did you come from? I was just looking around your yard. Where's your polo bear? My polo bear? Oh, he's asleep for the winter. Do you live around here? Yes, we just moved into that new house next to Ronald Coleman's. Oh, next to Ronald Coleman's. Oh, that's well. We're, we're going to be neighbors, aren't we? Uh-huh. You're Jack Benny, aren't you? That's right. <laughs> that's who I am. Uh, gee, I heard you do Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde on the radio. What a performance! <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was pretty good. Say, little girl, your face is kind of familiar. Haven't I seen you in pictures? You might have. My name's Carolyn Lee. Oh, Carolyn Lee. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is certainly a surprise. So little Miss Lee is my neighbor. Ah, uh, you can call me Carolyn. Ah, <laughs> uh, good. And, and you can call me Jack. Okay, Jack. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, gee, she's cute. Say, Carolyn, are you going to be busy Christmas morning? I don't know. Why? Well, I had a telephone call from Santa Claus last night, and he told me he was going to leave a beautiful present under my tree, especially for you. Well, let's analyze this. How did Santa Claus know you were going to meet me? Oh, he even knows about things before they happen. He knows everything. Then and why that's you... why we've got to be real good, especially around Christmas. Then why are you picking Mr. Coleman's oranges? Look, Carolyn. <laughs> these aren't Mr. Coleman's oranges. What hangs over the fence is mine. Now, let me tell you something about Santa Claus, Carolyn. <laughs> Every year at this time, he makes a list of good little boys and girls. And when they wake up Christmas morning... Hey, boss, boss, come in here. I'll be with you in a minute. And, Carolyn, if these old boys and girls have been real good... You gotta come in now, boy. Mr. Billsley's chopping down the Christmas tree. What? <laughs> chopping down the tree? See you later, Carolyn. Mr. Billingsley! Mr. Billingsley, Mary, stop him! It's too late now! Timber! Oh, my goodness. I knew I should have taken away his hatchet. What a combination. Golden apricots and rich, shimmering lemon jello. That's the swell blend that makes jello apricot rings such a grand treat. Just sliced canned apricots and lemon jello, deliciously molded into one of the most tempting desserts you ever tasted. And one of the easiest, too. Simply dissolve one package of lemon jello in one and one fourth cups of hot water. Next, add a dash of salt and three fourths cup of syrup from the canned apricots. Then chill until thickened and fold in two and a half cups of the sliced canned apricots themselves. When molded, served with a garnishing of whipped cream, apricot quarters, and green maraschino cherry. And there's a dessert you just can't beat for taste and attractiveness. Juicy sliced apricots blended with the richness of sunny lemon jello. So get them both and make up this delightful treat. Jell-O makes any gelatin dessert taste extra good because the locked-in process protects the flavor for your complete enjoyment. We're a little late, so good night, folks, and Merry Christmas to all. Remember, tomorrow when you order Jell-O, order Jell-O puddings, too, in all three flavors. Jell-O puddings are just like grandma's, only more so. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles.